into my little she shed slash library slash study space slash craft space. It is a disaster right now and I just feel like doing a little bit of a spring reset. First, we're going to clean up in the she shed and then we're going to clean this up. <laughs> Life has been a bit crazy lately. It was my birthday recently, so I got some books. I'm doing a buddy read, and so I got the rest of the books for that. Just some planning, the books I've read, content that I'm trying to create. I went to Nashville recently for my aunt's bachelorette party, some things I want to get rid of. I'm working on my book blanket, which I'll talk to you guys about later some things I want to get rid of or donate or that I don't need currently. So life is just a bit of a mess. So we're going to do a spring refresh. Here's what we have. Um, we got this little shelf on. It's pretty sturdy, but it's a lot thinner than I thought. I tried putting in another book and it wouldn't fit. So it looks like I'm going to have to stick to the thinner books. And then I've had this crow print for a while that I absolutely love. But it's a little narrower than the standard like 8x11 frame or 8x14 or whatever its dimensions are. So I took it out of the frame and put it on this little dowel rod that I got recently for another project. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look terrible. I don't know. I think I'm going to try and get one of those magnetic wooden hangers like for the top and bottom. But for now... I think it's okay. At least it looks a little more something. I also have this that I really like and I was thinking about hanging it, but I think that might be too much. I don't know. I, I don't think it goes with this aesthetic. And you know what? I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But now I'll have a little bit more of a background for filming and it's just not quite so empty. So for now, I'm satisfied. Now that that's finished and the floor is all clean and things are kind of chaotically put together, I'm going to go ahead and do some prep for some videos. I like to create stacks of books like down here on the floor and then I'll do sticky notes and stuff like that so that I know what is going on for what. Hello. Because as a grad student, I usually pre-film a lot of stuff so I have to kind of be organized and prepared so hello that's my face no thank you let's uh, let's do that I don't know where to start I like don't know where to start we're gonna put this on a time lapse <laughs> Okay, I think we have these stacks all together now. I want to tell you what they're about, but I also don't want to spoil all of the videos that are coming in the future, so just keep an eye out for those because they'll be coming soon. This shelf is reorganized. I kind of shuffled some books around that I read. I actually pulled a few for an unhaul, which will be in a separate video, and then I just reshuffled some books around. This is a stack of books that kind of have to do with traveling which I'm going to be using in the near future and then these are all the books that I've annotated that I'm also going to be using in a future video so it's chaotic but it makes sense in my head and it's going to help when I do a bunch of filming tomorrow for just prepping and stuff like that so very excited 
Hey friends, it's later and I am still a hot mess. But one of the things that I need to do to continue to get this space clean is I need to get rid of these two projects that I, I'm just not liking them so I'm going to frog them. If you don't know what frogging means, it just means that I'm going to undo them so that I can like keep the yarn instead of just throwing them away because this is actually quite a bit of yarn. So as you can see, I was making this blanket and I love the pattern, but I don't like the color scheme. Like the, some of them just don't go well together and it's really bothering me. Um, I love this, this pattern though. So I'll definitely use it again in the future and maybe with a little bit bigger size hook. Then I'll have all this yarn that I can like finally use again and like put back and maybe use for my book blanket or another project. You can see my yarn back here. Um, and then we have one more project. This I actually started for my brother's Christmas slash birthday present. He, his birthday is like January 12th. So I was just gonna put it together because it's huge. Um, and I purchased this pattern and all this yarn and it was gonna be a pretty big blanket and it's gorgeous like it's literally stunning but I am just having the hardest time finishing it and I just I've just I've been working on this for like six months and I just can't make myself so maybe I'll think about this a little bit more because I'm seeing this on the screen and I'm like ah, it's so pretty but I've already started another blanket for him I told him I was like you're not getting it this year it's just gonna take a while um and I really like that pattern and it doesn't require quite so much focus because I just, I don't have time to be doing a project like this that requires quite so much attention to detail because I just, I just don't have that time. Maybe I'll just wait and think about this one. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do that while I listen to some of my schoolwork. One of my classes has optional podcasts that coincide with the information that we are learning about, so I'm gonna listen to those while I do some winding. Hello everyone, now that the she shed is clean and reset. Let's do a reset of this. <laughs> first things first, I am going to do a scalp detox. I haven't done one of these in a while. So I got the Rosemary Apple Cider Scalp Detox Tonic from Pacifica. I like to do these little scalp scrubs, but I do not recommend doing them together because this does have apple cider vinegar in it. and. If you like do this, it's gonna create little scratches, micro abrasions on your scalp and mix with the vinegar, it doesn't go well. So do one or the other. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. It has a really nice smell and I checked the ingredients because I'm an ingredient girly and it has a lot of good ingredients versus some of the bad ones. I do that and then, absolutely not sponsored. These are just things that I absolutely love and would love to share with you guys. I love native shampoo and native products. The last few years I've been using their shampoo and I absolutely love it. I love the cucumber and mint. I also love the almond scent, I believe. Um, so I'll go ahead and do this as well. I still haven't found a deep conditioner that I love that doesn't have a lot of alcohol in it. So if you have a deep conditioner for your hair that you absolutely love and recommend, please let me know in the comments. Then I like to do a body scrub with this. This is the native body wash in the scent lavender and rose. It's my absolute all time favorite. And then I'll go in with either a brush or a scrubby cloth and just go to town and exfoliate. After I shower and after my skin is all nice and moist, I like to use the Peter Thomas Raw Firm Peeling Gel. I have learned that uh, my skin really likes these chemical peel exfoliants and it does an amazing job. My skin feels baby smooth. It is pretty pricey, but the last one that I had of this lasted me almost two years because I use it maybe once a week if I can. After all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a face mask. This is my favorite brand of face masks by Medi Heal. It is a Korean brand. I found it when I did live in Korea. This is my favorite one of all of them. It has a lot of really great ingredients for an affordable price tag. These are also available on Amazon. I will try and link them for you guys. I might whiten my teeth today. I don't do it very often, maybe once a month, but I do have these dental whitening treatments. I got these from H-E-B, their H-E-B brand. H-E-B is a local grocery store in Texas. It is amazing and wonderful. Their brand name stuff is excellent. So I think I might do that too. 
Do crest whitening strips make your teeth sensitive? That's why I switched to H-E-B brand because Crest whitening strips, they make my teeth whiter, but they make my teeth really sensitive. And these do the same, but without the sensitivity. Guys, my hair has already gotten so long. I like want to cut it already again. <laughs> it hasn't even been a month and I'm like, I want it shorter. <laughs> okay, now that I've shown you all of those things, I'm gonna go hop in the shower. finished unwinding the blanket and have kind of returned all of the yarn to its location. I have all of the yarn to update my book blanket over here. So I don't know if I told you about this, but if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I am making a book blanket. So for every book that I've read in 2024, I am crocheting a row. The color matches the cover of the book. So let's go over here. So here it is. So like, for example, that cute little green is for the Santa suit. The black is for Sky in the Deep. There are, of course, some ebooks that I've read. Like, for example, this little pink one and this blue and this pink one as well. But like, there's the blue that goes with the Hawthorne Legacy, Wings of Fire, Una Out of Order. So yeah, I have quite a few books to update from the final gambit onward, as well as some ebooks. So... I have some work to do. For example, in February, I read The Spanish Love Deception, so we have this cute little peach. Um, I read Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey, so this pink. I read Evie Drake Starts Over with this pretty green and blue. I have all of the colors all ready to go. I just need some time to sit down because I am documenting the process on Instagram and TikTok. So if you're interested in following me and keeping up to date with that, all of that information is in the description. I also filmed some videos, so there are a few less stacks over here. I set up my TBR cart, which I will explain in a second. Those are all books and series that I'm trying to focus on this year. And then we have my book wall that I'm creating of books that I've read so far this year. I just filmed my February reading wrap up for most of those books. So definitely be sure to check that out if you're interested. So I would love your opinion because I'm a little lost about what to do here. Um, for example, these are all of the books that I've read this year, but I don't love all of the books that I read this year. So I'm like, do I keep them for the entirety of the year, even when I move, which I'll be moving in May and June. So do I keep them or do I unhaul them now? Because there are a few that I know that I will never read and I don't even want to think about them again. <laughs> so I would love to know your opinion in the comments below. Do I keep them just, you know, like as a documentation kind of thing just for the rest of the year, just until the end of 2024? Or do I unhaul them now? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about this uh, book cart. That was so graceful. So up here we have March hopefuls. I talked about that in my February reading wrap up and March hopefuls video. So please go check that out if you're interested in hearing about that. I'm doing a buddy read with my friend Autumn and Erica and we are reading the Shatter Me series. Finally, I have been wanting to read that series for forever. The hype is real. I'm having a good time so far. Then just for the sake of space, here's some more books and series that I want to read kind of in the near future because it would really wrap things up quickly. So like, for example, this is the last book in the Percy Jackson series that I need to read to complete that series, even though Rick Riordan is continuing it and there's another book coming out this year in that series. Uncle Rick did it again. Then we have the Wings of Fire series. I have just three more of these books to complete the books that I own in the series. And then we have Radiant Sin and Cruel Seduction, which is the Dark Olympus series by Katie Robert. I really love that series. I don't know why I haven't read another one of those books in a while. Hopefully I can get to one of those soon. Then on the back side, up here at the top, these are books that I'm currently reading that I just 
haven't been feeling for a while now and so I set them aside so first we have hello stranger by Catherine Center I started the audio and I just wasn't vibing with it and then it kind of put me off the book so I need to um I need to give it another go because really I was only at 11% when I stopped listening to it and 11% just really isn't enough to know if that book is for me or not. Then we have A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I started this in a challenge last year pretty early on and I never finished that video. You can watch this video if you're interested. I put a compilation of videos I started and never finished explaining why and what happened um, and this was one of those videos. This book broke me. I am about 33% so in the 200s it's not that I dislike it. I really like the writing style, but we got to a point where our main character, Jude, is just not receptive to help. He's not in a good place, but he's not receptive to help. He is not receptive towards his friends who only want the best for him. It just started grinding my gears, so I stopped and I haven't picked it up since. Then we have A Tailor Made Bride. I've picked this up a few times. I'm like only a few chapters in, but it's really cute so far. And I think I'm just gonna pick it up slowly when I want like a wholesome read. Then we have Loveless by Alice Oseman. Again, with the narrator experience, the narrator just made her seem uncertain about everything and I was getting a little tired of it so I wanted to pick it up physically and just like skim those scenes but I just haven't reached for it since then then we have a merry little meet cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone I am having a good time I'm on page 70 um, but I recently went on a trip and I was like I'm not gonna take this on the plane and have people ask me what kind of book I'm reading while I'm on a trip because I just didn't want to mess with that not that I'm embarrassed by this but I just like also want to think about the person who's next to me and might see some of those scenes so <laughs> then we have no one is talking about this by Patricia Patricia Lockwood. I'm actually enjoying this. It's just weird and I want to be in that like weird mindset when I read it, if that makes sense. Like I want to be receptive to the weirdness when I read it. I've just been slowly reading it when I feel like it. Then down here are my reader bus books for the year. I think something that happened with me last year is that I put my reader bust books back on my shelves and then I kind of forgot about them. So this year, because I actually do want to try and get to more of these books, I put them down here on their own separate shelf. Basically, I want to try and read these books in 12 months. And if I don't, then I will rehome them. Writers and Lovers, Regretting You, Call Me By Your Name, Emergency, Contact, Little Fires Everywhere, How to Fake It in Hollywood, Funny You Should Ask, The Secret Bridesmaid, The Penalty Box, and Linden Falls. Let's look down at the bottom now. Here are some nonfiction that I want to get to this year. So we have Believe It, which is a memoir about the owner and creator of It Cosmetics. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I think I'm actually going to try and listen to this on audio. Then we have Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, which I also do have on audio. Then we have The Finish Way, A History of the World in Six Classes. To Walk It Is to See It, Look Me in the Eye, Julie and Julie, uh, Secrets of Serotonin, Farm Family, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, and Strip Tease. Then down here, my final shelf is a bunch of sports romances. I have a secret little project that may or may not involve sports romances. So we have Icebreaker, Rock Bottom Girl, The Upside of Falling, Only When It's Us, Always Only You, Everything For You, Powerless, Reckless, Check-In Mate, Yes. Yes, chess is considered a sport. <laughs> Look it up. Fangirl Down, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, and Flawless. I think I have a few more in my stacks, but I'm not entirely sure, so that's it for now. That's a thumbs up, but it's hard to see. One last thing I'd like to discuss before I wrap things up, because this video is getting really long and lengthy, is this little guy. I was inspired by Alexis in Wonderland on TikTok to start doing this, and so I wanted to... <laughs> tell you guys about it so that I could be held accountable <laughs> and that is writing down my physical TBR. I have written every single book that I own that I have not read yet. It's not really in any particular order, just the order they were on my shelves and um, I'm keeping track of them. So I, as of yesterday, had 336 books on my physical TBR. That is way more than I thought because I do have a 
unread physical TBR shelf on Goodreads, but I must have missed some of the books and that's a lot of books to go through to try and make sure I have everything on there. So this is my Bible now. However, I did go through and I did unhaul a few of those books. So for example, I talk about this in my Reader Bust update and that is Stars Collide. Can you see the line cross out? The line cross is going to show when I unhaul a book and don't really read it. I'm putting the date that I do that too so that I can keep track. And then when I read the book, I'm going to highlight it and also put the date so that I can keep track. Of course, I'll probably update it several times. So like I'm putting the dates that I update it and all the books that I add. This does include my recent birthday haul and things like that. I have a lot of work to do. However, if you watched my February reading wrap up, I read 11 books off of my physical TBR, which is an all time high for me. I'm very proud of myself. So if I keep that up and, you know, listen to the Libby book while also reading the physical book I own, I think I can get through a lot more books. So that's my plan and my goal. But if you're interested, I am going to start doing weekly TikTok updates, also inspired by Alexis in Wonderland, talking about my physical TBR and how many books I've read versus how many books I've added to the TBR to attempt to get this number down. So now I'm down to 326 after my unhaul. Let's see how low I can get that by the end of this year. <laughs> I am determined. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing and joining our fam. I hope you're doing well whenever and wherever you're watching this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, everyone. Have a good week. See you next time.